All right, folks, and welcome back. We are doing edge defenders now for the prospect previews. Before we dive into it, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and of course, be sure to follow me on all social media at JK Bogan. We are starting with, I'm going to say everyone's favorite edge defender because I know a lot of you love this guy. It's Liatu Latu from UCLA who started out initially with Washington. He was a two year starter at UCLA, but he transferred from Washington after being medically retired, forced to medically retire by the Washington training staff from 2020 to 2021 due to a neck injury. And he went from not playing in 20, you know, not playing since 2019 to playing in 2022 and 2023 and being arguably the best pass rusher in college football in those two seasons in the FBS. Now, I am going to get into this thing and I'm really excited because I came away really impressed with Latu. Um, I'm going to go out and say he's probably going to end up being my number one pass rusher uh, in the draft. I think he's just got it all as a pure pass rusher. There are some things to work on. He is older because of the neck issue and missing those two seasons. Um, So he is, you know, he's 23 years old at the same time though. He's got the build. I'm just really excited to dive into it. Um, You know, watching his film and everything, I think he's got fantastic body composition, you know, 6'5", 265. Um, This is somebody who is, he has the perfect body to be 3'4", you know, as a stand-up pass rusher, outside linebacker. He did put his hand in the dirt, of course, at times. uh, So he could bulk up a little bit and move to 4'3", defensive end. We'll see what ends up happening there and who drafts him. Obviously, at the end of this, for you Rams fans, I will talk about whether or not he's a fit. And spoiler alert, I think he's a huge fit, but we'll get into that. Uh, He's got a wide variety of pass rushing maneuvers in his arsenal. Okay, so when I watch this guy play, um, he's got everything in the bag. I think it was Charles Davis, a friend of the show. Charles Davis during the combine said he, and I I mean, he said it wrong because you can only have 14 clubs on the PGA tour, not 15, but I understood with what he was saying. He said, essentially he has all 15 clubs in the bag, essentially has all 14 clubs in the bag. And I agree with that. I think he's got it all as a pass rusher. I mean, he's got every single bit of everything. I think he's way beyond his years and considering he only played like two legitimate seasons as the starter, I mean, that's that's saying something. He's always got a pass rush plan. He's well thought out. He's precise in his work. It doesn't matter who he's going up against. He has a plan for every situation. He's going to use every single maneuver to get to the quarterback. Um, he's fluid, you know, very fluid mover. He's got a great quick first step. Right off the snap, you can see it. He's got a great first step. It's going to be a problem for tackles right away to get their hands on him because before you know it, he's already at your hip. And then after that, he's already turned the corner on that arc and he's about to hit your quarterback. And that's just a speed. You know, that's just using speed, being a speed rusher. I mean, he's, you know, he has all different moves. I mean, he's got an inside spin move. He's got a cross chop. I mean, he's just, he's got it all. He, he can use, he can convert speed to power when given um, that opportunity when it's needed. Um, but I mean, he wins inside, he wins outside. I mean, it's just really impressive. I mean, you know, I think he's got these, it's obvious on film. He's got these active hands, you know, not only at the point of attack, but one thing that really stands out to me on tape is this is somebody that. If he can't get to the quarterback, he's going to recognize that and he's going to get his hands up and make sure that he can try to bat that pass down. Not everybody does that. That is a skill and that is a rare skill. I'm not saying it should be rare, but you'd be surprised how many guys do not do that. And so he's actually had some interceptions. He's had some tips that become interceptions because he's had active hands, not just at the point of attack, but just as a guy, as an edge defender that knows he's not going to be able to get to the quarterback on this specific rep. So he's like, all right, I'm going to do the next best thing and be a corner or, you know, be a safety or be a linebacker uh, inside linebacker. You know, I'm just going to get my hands up there and try to make a play on the ball. And it works. Um, The motor's never off. It's just never off with him. He's an absolute dynamo of a rusher. Um, 
you know, his ankle flexion is adequate for the position, allows him to bend off the edge the way he does. Uh, he holds his own in one-on-one in the run defensive department. He sets the edge well, ha- you know, has understanding of basic leverage and things along that nature. He is NFL ready, both physically and mentally. I just came away really impressed with Latu uh, just as a player, just very uh, beyond his years, if you will. And he fights through blocks uh, to help in the run defense department. Um, it's a big component of his game uh, in which he, you know, displays that second effort. So he might lose at the, at the initial point of attack. Um, and that might, you know, knock him off his platform, but he's going to continue to fight and try to get back to where that ball is. He's going to try to get back to the center of the play. He does give it his all. Um, so you love to see that. Those are guys that I could hundred percent all day, every day recommend drafting regardless of red flags. If you have a guy that has all of these tools, if you have a guy that has just a deeper understanding of the game, who's just a student of the game, but also He's that guy that just the motor's never off. He plays 110%. Those are guys that, you know, you might have a few draft crushes if you're in a war room. Those are guys that will win. You know, they call it a war room for a reason. Okay. It's the, you know, sometimes the head coach and owner and GM and assistant GM and a bunch of scouts and whatnot. Who knows? Coaches. But there's a reason why it's called a war room. Everyone goes to war over the certain guys that they want to draft when it comes to be their turn or before it comes to be their turn. And to me, if you're arguing over Latu, whoever is arguing for Latu, I mean, they, they're in a good position. It's easy to argue to go and get this guy and, and, and pay him and, and you know make him a focal point of your defense. But you know what else is uh, good to make a focal point, not of your defense, but of your sleep? It's Mantis Sleep. And ignore that segue, but Mantis Sleep is great, um, unlike that segue. Mantis Sleep um, is just fantastic. You have the 100% blackout. This is a sleep mask, in case you were wondering. It's the sound mask, so you could pair it up with your phone. has 20-plus hours of battery life. Um, this thing is engineered for side sleeping, has the C-shaped eye cups, which is great. Um, razor-thin headphones perfectly match your ears. Um, it's just all sorts of great. It's helped me sleep. So if you're having issues sleeping, you can go over. Uh, use the uh, promo code link is in the description, but the promo code is JK Bogan and you'll get 10% off your Mantis sleep purchase. Now back to the video. So we talked about all the great things about Layatu Latu and it might be Layatu Latu. So if that's the case, I normally don't love when people correct my pronunciation because it's kind of annoying. And especially like if you ignore everything that I said and that's all that you took away from the video, it's kind of annoying. But I give you permission <laughs> in this one. If you want to say it's Leatu Latu, let me know. I don't. I don't want to butcher people's names. I don't like doing it. I get mine butchered all the time. I know what it's like. So yeah, let me know in the comment section below. Let's move on. Weaknesses. What's wrong with this guy? Okay. Why? Why in mock drafts is Latu going? Why is he falling to nineteen for the Rams? Like, how many mock drafts do you see where Latu is available at nineteen? Why is he falling? Why isn't he going top 10? That's a good question if you're asking any of those. Well, first off, the neck injury history is no joke. I mean, keep in mind, the Washington medical staff, if you've already forgotten earlier in the video, they medically retired him. He then went to UCLA and the staff cleared him, okay? Some may pass on him because that is considered a red flag. And you have to understand something. You can judge... And it may be stupid and you may think, okay, Latu is going to kill those teams and he's going to make a big time play, you know, to go to the Super Bowl or something against these teams. And and maybe you're right. But I also have to understand that first round picks make or break you. And by make, they can give you an extension as a GM. But if you miss them, you can get fired. And you don't get the excuse of, oh, well, you know, who knew that he was going to get hurt when he's already had a serious neck injury? If he were to hurt his neck again, that's on you. So I do understand the hesitancy, um, not to mention it's a it's a good class as far as top heaviness. There's a lot of great 
uh, first round talents that you could pick at the same time though, there are going to be enough teams that I think are interested in him where maybe those mock drafts that have him going a little bit late will be wrong. And to be fair, I have a mock draft. I think I have him going. The latest one that I just put out for the first round on Twitter was like 26th to the Bucks. Um, I mean, I could see him going way earlier. So we'll see what ends up happening. He's also not an elite athlete. Um, it's going to make his job tougher in the NFL. He's a very good athlete, but he's not elite. Okay. Um, that That's an important thing there. Because elite athleticism, it's why you'll probably see Dallas Turner go before him. I think he's way better than Dallas Turner, personally. But Dallas Turner's two years younger, and he's got elite athleticism. Teams like that. If they feel like they have a great coaching staff, they want traits, they want tools, they want all of that. And we've already seen. I mean, how many times have we seen the top leading sack artist in college not go in the first round or fall for whatever reason. That's just the way it is. They focus on traits more than production. I think there should be a little bit of a mix, but that's just me. Um, he over pursues when it comes to outside runs, takes himself completely out of the play. That's something I noticed. Uh, it's something you turn on any sort of tape and you'll see that at least once a game, he takes himself entirely out of the play by over pursuit. That's not a bad thing. And that's something that can be corrected. Arm length is shorter, uh, which is going to make his margin for error smaller. That is something that he can't correct. And I think that's nitpickiness, honestly. I just, I added it, it his arm length is shorter than I expected. Um, But he's still really freaking good and it has all the moves in the book. So it might not be a big deal. Um, He can be moved around more. Uh, he can, he can be moved around by more powerful offense alignment. So the problem here is that while he sets the edge well and can do those things in the run game, you'll still see like a guy like JC Latham is going to literally take him off your screen. Like number 15 does not exist in the play anymore. Okay. Th bigger offensive linemen are going to give him problems. Uh, it's just the way it is more powerful. Um, he does get, he, he does have those disappearing acts, but he's still so freaking good. And of course, the last weakness, not really his fault. He's 23 and he's coming off his fifth year of college due to injury. And some teams might not want an older prospect. And I think that's entirely fair. And I think that's entirely normal. Um, the Rams really have never cared about the age. I think if anything, it seems like they do value those older prospects that have gone through it. But, you know, we'll see. As far as Latu, my thoughts on him, my final, th my final thoughts, excuse me, um, very skilled pass rusher who at the very least is NFL ready as a pass rusher. So he might not be NFL ready in terms of as, you know, a run defender, but day one as a pass rusher, he should have no issue transitioning. He has plenty of moves already developed for the next level and has room to grow, which is great. And he has, he's incredibly high character guy. The things I've heard about him, very high character, a leader, you know, highly productive player coming out of a legit power five program. And like I mentioned before, he led the FBS over the last two years in sacks with 27. To me, Latu is a no doubt or first rounder. Okay, he's a first round talent through and through uh, whether or not he's the first edge off the board remains to be seen. Now, he would be for me um, because I think he's the best edge defender. But I, I like Jared verse. I like Dallas Turner. Um, I like Chop Robinson. We'll get into those guys, but we're starting off with, you know, lot to. So PFF, they have him first pass rush grade, sixth run defense grade, first overall grade, first coverage grade. These are all edge, you know, I, I think that goes without saying, but still uh, 15 sacks, which is second in the league, 62 pressures, which is third in the FBS, one penalty, um, third in pass rush production, first in win rate, pass rush win rate at 26.2% of the time, 23 years of age. And again, he's six foot five, 265 pounds. So let's dive into my grades. And then after that, we'll talk about whether or not the Rams fit and why. Okay. So 
Abil- uh, agility, excuse me, 9.2. Bend, 8.6. Power, 8 out of 10. Run defense, 8.5 out of 10. Explosiveness, 9 out of 10. Motor, 9.7 out of 10. Tackling, 8.6. Read and react, 9.5. Hand usage, 9.5. And pass rush plan, one of the best I've ever seen, 9.8 out of 10, which gives us a total of 90.4 out of 100, which puts him in the first round. To me, this is a no-brainer if you need a rusher. Okay, you're you know, you're not too worried about the run defense and he's not he's not like a super liability in the run defense. It's just if you want to be nitpicky, which is what you should be if you're really evaluating prospects, you don't want to be overly nitpicky to the point where you end up missing out on talent because of that. But you should be, you know, cognizant of the fact that this guy, while he works in the NFL or he works at the college level and he's sixth run defense overall for PFF, that, you know, you see parts of his game where the NFL that doesn't translate. So we'll have to figure things out. Um, To me, Latu is 100% a fit for the Rams. Okay. First off, he has great size for the position. Okay. He'd be a stand up three, four outside linebacker. I know the Rams don't run a true three, four, but you get the gist of it. He'd be on the outside across from Byron young. Here's where it gets intriguing. Okay. Byron young is older. Byron young is what he's going to be 26 this year, 25. So he is older. Okay. There is a chance the Rams get a Brian Burns. There's a chance they trade for Josh Allen, not the bills. Josh Allen. There's a chance they signed Daniel Hunter and there's a chance they signed Khalil Mack if he is released or, you know, Joey Bosa, if he's released by the Chargers. I still think Latu would be a fit under those circumstances. I'm not predicting Latu goes to the Rams. What I'm saying is even if they get one of those top notch guys, I think he can push the hell out of Byron Young. I really like Byron Young, no doubt about it. I think he's a lot of fun to watch. Byron Young's play started to falter down the stretch, okay? So, to be fair, I think he's very good, but I don't think he's one of those guys that he's 100% guaranteed going to start for the next decade, right? We don't know. I mean, there's there's a chance he doesn't even get re-signed after his contract. Remember, we were talking about Terrell Lewis. Obviously, I think he did more than Terrell Lewis did his entire career because, unfortunately, Ty- Terrell Lewis couldn't stay healthy. But my point being is that Byron Young is a third-round pick who started last year. He showed, you know, glimpses of brilliance, but this team still needs more pressure than what they got last year. And I think that consistent pressure would come from Latu and then whoever. So if they don't pick up anybody in free agency, then this is even more of a no-brainer and would start day one. And Latu, to me, if he had to, probably starts over, you know, he pushes and probably starts over Byron Young. And Byron Young goes into more of a rotational basis. And maybe they do something where Byron Young comes in on, on, you know, obvious running downs, right? Um, The way I see it is this. Even if the Rams get Daniil Hunter or Brian Burns or whoever, this guy's too good where if you're not going to move from 19, I mean, it makes sense to just take him. And I'm not one to get into all sports business and everything because that's just not this channel. It's never been me. But last time I checked, drafting a guy from UCLA, that's going to get the fans pretty wild, uh, you know, riled up in a good way. Uh, you know, keeping him in LA, having him go to the Rams, so I'm just saying we, we saw, we saw that, uh, you know, last year the chargers got, uh, Tuli Tua a from USC. Who's to say the Rams don't match him with Latu this year. Personally, I think Latu comes out right away. If he was on the Rams, he'd be their best edge defender currently. Uh, I do think he's better than Byron Young. Byron Young has more NFL experience, but I think Latu's a better pure pass rusher. I think Byron Young's probably better in the run game because we know he works in the run game. I'm not saying Byron Young's the greatest run defender ever, but we know he can work there because we've seen a full season of it. If they get at, you know, Bosa or whoever, I still think Latu makes sense. So the final question 
How would I answer it? Yes. Latu's a fit. And notice for this video, unlike Olu Fashanu and, you know, uh, Talisa Fuwaga, I think is how you say his name, Talisa Fuwaga, and Joe Alt, those three, notice the title said, should the Rams trade up to get them? Well, this to me doesn't necessarily have to be a trade up. And I could be wrong. But I just, I feel like that neck issue is going to be enough that holds teams back, gives teams enough pause, and I think the Rams can take advantage of it potentially. Again, not a pause, like not a not a prediction, but again, I could see it. And one last thing, remember when Sean McVay was talking about what he's looking for in draft prospects, what they look for? They're looking for guys who have been through it. They've gone through adversity. These are guys that don't back down from a challenge. And you're not going to find many that have gone through what Latu's gone through, having to medically retire and say no to the essentially say no to their medical staff and say, you know what? I'm going to go. I believe I can still play football. I'm going to go transfer to UCLA and get, you know, brought back, uh, cleared by the medical staff and go out there and immediately make an impact on a national scale. So Latu checks all the boxes. Will the Rams draft him? I don't know, but he certainly is a fit for the Rams. I'm curious what you guys think. Drop in the comment section below. Um, this has been Layatu Latu's draft profile, essentially. So, again, uh, you know, it, it's going to be fun to watch his career. I became a huge fan of his just watching, you know, some of his interviews and, <clears throat> you know, obviously you watch the tape and you feel really good about his game, but him as a person watching those combine interviews seems like a genuine guy, seems like a great locker room culture guy that the Rams would love. So I could see the Rams absolutely falling in love with him. Um, don't be surprised if Latu is wearing maybe his number 15, depending on what, you know, Demarcus Robinson wants to do. Don't be surprised if he's wearing his number 15 in LA this year. So that's all I got for you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and of course, follow me at JK Bogan. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later, folks. Do you love talking about the Rams, the NFL, or just want to be a part of a community? Join my free Discord server today. We're over 800 members. We got 24-7 live chat, a level 3 boosted server, the ability to call into JE Live, playing online games with us on kick streams, toggleable alerts for when I go live on YouTube or kick so you don't miss a live stream, and exclusive giveaways. Click the link in the description, the comments section, or the link that comes up in the video to learn more and join today. 